To respond to Jerry's comments, I disagree with some of what he says. Obviously, I'm a pilot, but I agree with some other things. For example, trains, and for that matter, intercity buses, do pollute less than planes. But he also claimed that planes pollute more than cars, something his political allies have also mentioned. I ran some numbers to try and get a comparison of car versus plane emissions, and I found this. Porter Airlines flies the Q400 out of Toronto City Centre Airport. They have a 70-seat, single-class configuration. The manufacturer of the Q400, Bombardier, publishes the amount of fuel the plane carries. They also publish range figures. Safe flight planning depends on these numbers, so manufacturers have to get them right. Given the number of passengers, it just takes some multiplication to work out the emissions produced by carrying one passenger one kilometer. These figures assume a plane 70% full. We also have the same numbers available for cars and light duty trucks. One aviation opponent claimed that even Hummers pollute less than planes, so I included the figures for an H2 Hummer. Since we have the fuel efficiency figures for cars and light trucks, getting the pollution per kilometer involves nothing more than multiplication. We also factor in the difference between air distance and road distance. Because planes fly shorter courses, they can go directly. The amount this matters varies, but for instance, on a trip to Thunder Bay, a plane flies over Lake Superior, a car goes around it. After doing the numbers, it seems that someone flying in a Q400 pollutes considerably less than someone driving their own car. That doesn't mean we have no obligation to reduce the amount of pollution we inflict on ourselves and other people. But it does mean that someone driving their own car isn't necessarily, and in fact probably isn't, inflicting less pollution on the world than someone taking a flight in one of the Q400s that Porter flies out of Toronto City Centre Airport.